Hey everybody, Janice here. Now I know it has been quite a while since I have made a video and I am so sorry. <laughs> um, you know, good intentions and all on getting on here and kind of explaining things and then letting everybody know up ahead of time and then life takes over and that just did not happen. And so I'm so sorry. I know I've had a lot of people um, email and message saying, hey, what are you doing? Are you crafting anymore? What's going on? Um, so I'm not going to get into the super long story of it, but um, I will give a little bit of an explanation. Um, around September-ish, um, Oct September, October-ish, uh, the company that I was a part of, Fun Stampers Journey, decided to close its doors to a, the coach aspect of it. Um, and become a purely, they said a hybrid retail, um, and I forgot what else uh, deal, but it's, it's mainly a retail store now. And they did away with coaches and kind of the whole community aspect of it. Um, and they uh, only basically now have an affiliate program, um, which, gosh, is just a little minuscule kind of a deal. And at about the same time, well, maybe not exactly the same time, back in July, I had started my master's program. I am a teacher. You guys, I think if you follow me probably know that. And I had just got the bug. I wanted to kind of advance in my career. Um, and so uh, ever since July, I have been in grad school um, and so when September came and this news, um, came about that Fun Super Journey was no longer doing direct sales, but they were doing retail only. I, it was, um, an easy choice for me. I did not become an affiliate because again, it just wasn't worth the effort and time. And I didn't really have that time to have to start from scratch to, um, become an affiliate for kind of very little, um, reward. So I pretty much right then and there stopped all of my crafting. Isn't that crazy? Um, I know it's crazy, but honestly, um, the time it would, I just didn't have the time to, to kind of start over again. It's just such a big deal. I um, gave a whole bunch of my time and energy to Fun Stampers Journey. And I was really sad when um, the company had kind of um, shut its doors to direct sales. So, um, don't know what you've heard, but they, they just weren't doing very well. The uh, direct sales portion was just not bringing in as much as it uh, needed to in order for them to sustain um, that portion. And so, kind of is what it is. And so, anyway, um, obviously, you can still get Fun Stampers Journey stuff just directly through the website. And it doesn't really go to any, doesn't help a coach, doesn't help a person. Um, you can find affiliates, and I'm sure there are, there, and there are plenty out there. That are still kind of doing their thing, um, but I am not. So you might be wondering what got you back on making a video. Um, well, a dear friend, a former FSJ coach, has started her own stamping and, and crafting line. I'm like, what? So she reached out to me and she asked if I would be willing to um, make um, a little something with some of her stamps and dies. And I was like, well, of course, yes. And I hadn't crafted in literally, I mean, it's not really a year, but it feels like it's been a year uh, since, since September, I think it is. Um, and so anyway, I said yes and, um, sh and got the cutest stamps and the sweetest dies, which I can't, I guess, I guess I could show you, uh, but I'm just going to show you the one stamp set, um, and the card that I, um, made with it. So anyway, I hope it's not too weird. I just jump right on in because I feel like, um, I gave this kind of little explanation. If you have questions, if you have questions, just ask me, you can ask me in the comment section or message me and I'm happy to reply. I'm still in grad school, by the way, I graduate in August. So it's really, really, really close. Um, but now that summer and school is out for the summer, not grad school, but my work work, um, is out. Um, then I'm focusing just on my grad work, but I do have a lot more time now so I can, um, hopefully start making a couple more videos here and there just for fun. So anyway, it is what it is. So I'll go ahead and, and see if I can switch views here. I'm going to, 
got some prep stuff here. Um, and then I'm going to show you her super adorable stamp set. All right, here we go. Da, 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 da. All right, so if you've been watching Chelsea Comer, the Inky Stamper on Facebook, then you have already seen this. Um, but so she is starting her, a new stamp line. And um, her first collection is called the Bug Jar. So, so stinking cute. Um, she's got a couple, and there's, um, a, 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 I think, I know, um, a few more, a lot more, hopefully, um, that are going to come down the pipeline. But I wanted to show you that cute little bugarooski, that cicada right there. It's like, I'm, I'm sorry if it's blurry. It's been a little while since I've done this, so you know. Um, this is a kind of an all around kind of stamp set. It's a birth, got the birthday, but it's also get well. It's a little love ya. It says, you make my heart sing. And the font or the sentiment that I chose was, you are not old in, cic in cicada years. And then um, in the inside, and I'll show you the card here in a minute, I, I uh, put the happy birthday. Anyway, isn't that so cute? So little cicada, actually not quite little. It's a good little size. Some adorable little band-aid images. I don't know if y'all can see that clearly. Little leaves, a beautiful leaf, and then some hearts. So the cool thing about her um, stamps is they come in this really kind of fun package. And it's um, Ziplocked. A really nice, sturdy Ziploc. It's kind of cool. So stamps stay fresh. You can store dyes in here because she does have the dye to the cicada as well. Um, it's just kind of a cool, neat, kind of refreshing uh, package. And very sturdy, very high quality too. Uh, okay, so here is the cute little cicada and all the other parts to it and as you can tell i have used it um i have used polymer stamps before and i want to say that this is high quality stuff it is nice and thick and just that lovely tacky um feel anyway super super cute i love it nice thick quality um polymer and let me go ahead and just jump in, okay? So I wanted to first show you the stamp set um, and share a little bit about the quality because it is nice quality. So, all right, let me go ahead and show you my project. Okay, you guys, be nice to me. I haven't created in almost a year, but what do you think? He's gonna be so cute. Oh my gosh, I love him. Love him. Um, so today I'm not going to take you through everything. I'll just take you through how I colored him and kind of walk you through how I put it together. Um, it's not too hard. It's pretty simple. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you just kind of like the basics. So I started off with a, um, craft colored cardstock. And then from there, a piece of the Fun Stamper's Journey Cool Pool. And, you know, I always try to pre-measure these and then I just forget but this one is five and a quarter by four. So that's the first panel. Okay, so five and a quarter by four. And I chose to do two um, different stamps um, around the edge here and only around the edge because that's really all you're gonna see. And so I started off with the cute little leaves as a background. I wanted to create my own little background um, little stamped kind of like background paper um, and then I first started it with the cool pool so you're getting a little bit of a um, tone on tone kind of effect here I'm surprised that I remember that tone on tone a little fancy okay and so basically I'm just stamping in no particular order Although I say no particular order, but I do kind of try to make sure that the little leafies don't um, cross over, but I don't think it's really that big a deal. Don't really matter if they did, if they didn't, you won't be able to tell. Because once this one dries, it's just very faint. It just gives a very faint impression. And then the little corner piece there. Okay, now y'all can see that now, of course, because it's wet, but let me bring the dried um, inked one. Can you believe I'm bad? No, I can't. Okay, so can you see if I race up, will get blurry? I don't know if it's going to get blurry. I don't know if y'all can see that, but in real life, you can see a very faint impression. Yeah, I think it's just too blurry. Let me see if I can hold it up to this one. 
Um, where am I going? Yeah, no, you can't pick it up. Anyways, it's there. You can see it there. I promise. It dries a little bit more faintly than this. Um, does that make sense? More faint? Yes, more faint than that. Okay, that was that cool pull. And then to tip it up a notch, I went and I um, went over it with Kiwi Slice, which is that, that deeper green. And this one, again, just the same thing right over it, just to create that leafy background. I first tried it with just the solid, but I felt like it needed something. I needed it to kind of pop. So add in that kiwi slice, that darker green. Looks perfect. Okay, so after that, um, I adhered this to the card panel here, which I'm not going to do, but I'll just kind of lay it all out for you. Um, and on top of that, we'll go this little white piece. And this is three and a half by three and a half. I do remember that dimension <laughs> because this is going to be the background for Mr. Cicada and that super fun, beautiful leaf that goes right there. Um, so what I did is I grabbed my little stampin' deal, this little stamp deal, stampaholic because I needed it. And then from there, I placed my little leaf image and it's the bigger leaf image. And now originally when I was gonna put this, I wanted, I think that I was thinking the leaf could go either way. You know, you can have your leaf go this way, you can have your leaf go this way, which this is the way I think that it would naturally go. Um, but I, I didn't want it to go that way naturally. I wanted it to be kind of up. And so I went ahead and put it upside down. Um, and so just kind of align it about three fourths of the way down the paper. Just like so. And I used our black licorice. I say our, you guys, use whatever black you want. <laughs> I hear Ms. Inky's damper might be coming out with the pink, so try it out. Okay, I'm going to press it down and then come back to it. Did you hear that little stick? It's a good sound for acrylic stamping. One, and then it looks like I didn't pick up a little bit of the leaf detail, so I'll try one more time. One more time. Da, 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 da. Okay, it's a little dark, but we're just going to go with it, okay? The only reason I'm doing this is because I wanted to show you how I colored it, okay? I used our my awesome, beloved, much beloved Copic Malkas. Now, I should say, I am not a professional, although I am Copic certified for what, whatever that's worth. <laughs> um, okay, so for the leaf, I used... A few. Now, you're not going to get a whole bunch of theory from me, but I will say <laughs> some colors been blend well together and some do not. And honestly, you just, you just kind of play with it. Look all this right here. This is me playing with it and kind of writing down my notes and whatnot. So um, I'll do this super, super fast. You guys, I have a cat and there was just a cat here on there. That's probably TMI, I'm sorry, but you know. And I don't have any particular way of doing this. And I probably want to pick up some, you know, people always ask what kind of inks you use. Memento ink is really good for um, Copic markers. It's the one that when I got certified um, that they said was kind of the best. FSJ ink has to be heat set, but you can tell I didn't heat set this. I'm too lazy. It works just fine. I just try not to, you know, smear the color over it because it will pick up some of that ink. Color my little leaf. Um, from there, I just kind of gradually grabbed some of the darker colors and simply just went around the stem area. Whatever is naturally um, darker. Oh, did I even tell you the colors? It's been a while. YG25. And this is YG17. And I think that's what I want. It's a little dark, but we're going to go for it anyway. I'm going to do the stem. One of the, my favorite things about um, Copic markers is just the beauty of blending. Like, they're so blendable. 
that's why they're so popular, you know? You know, give the little illusion of some fake stems. Veins, not stems. Sorry. You know, whatever. Okay, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to blend a little bit. Blend some of that in. And maybe I'll go in with, I'm looking for my darker one. It's not G24. Oh, maybe it is. No, it's not. It is. Yes, it is. G24. 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 Like bingo. Man, I miss Kazan. Hi, Kazan, if you're watching. Miss ya. <laughs> I miss all of my um, FSJ buds. Ladies, if you're watching, say hi. It's been a while. I know. I've been hugely MIA. But it's life. You guys, are just a boo-boo. See that right there? Well, just pretend you didn't see it. That's okay. Okay, I'm not going to worry too much about this leaf because that's about all I'm going to do with it. Um, it is going to be covered up with journey glaze when all said and done. So there's not too much dimension that's needed. On this one, I think I did do a little bit more. I think I went in a little bit more with um, the G24 in there to make it a little darker. Or maybe it wasn't G24. It was G94. Let's see. Yeah, that's probably it. It was G94. Here, I'll show you. Yeah, that's just a wee bit darker. There we go. That's that's what it was. G94. Um, okay, so I did do a little bit of a shadow effect on the leaf with the Copic marker. So it's barely visible on camera, but can you see there's a little bit of a shadow, a little shadow right there? And so for that, I used do 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 do. You guys, I left my black uncovered. Lamo man, so out of touch. Um C1, C00, these two. I know that's backwards. There you go. So Z, C00 came through. And actually, I'm going to use that C00 to kind of blend some of that green that I kind of messed it up with. That's the, um, the bummer of not piercing is when you're coloring directly on what's going to be shown. You know. All right, you can see that a little bit. And then I'm going to come in with the darker. Yes, that was my ringer. Um, and then I'm going to go right up against the edge of the line there. Oh my gosh, you guys, I miss this. I miss this. <laughs> I miss you guys. Let's see if I can make it happen a little bit more often. I don't know. I don't know. Come on, camera, focus. Okay. One more time. Okay. All right. So I've got a little bit of a shadow there as if it is um, shadowed. I don't know. As if it's got some depth. Maybe that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Okay, that goes there. And you know what? I really didn't intend to spend that much time on that. I'm so sorry. Um, so if I was putting this card together, I would first adhere that first panel onto the craft base. And then I would put my beautiful floating leaf. We're going to call it the floating leaf. Man, that light is so shiny. <laughs> the floating leaf. And I would literally just adhere this down. And I just don't want to do it right now for sake of time. Um, you're laughing at me like Jan is sorry too long. Okay. Um, then from there, the, the, one of the two things just wanted to show you honestly was, um, creating the die cut piece. So I used one of my circle dies and this is the circle around die set. Yes, it is FSJ. Everything I probably will use is FSJ because I got so much of it and I love it. I really do. Even though. They're no longer doing direct sales. Um, okay, so this I'm going to run through my machine. Ouch. That hurt. And you won't see all of it. But you'll see the end result. And I basically aligned it so that it is, gosh, maybe like a fourth of an inch sticking out. And then just nice and centered there. Fourth of an inch. I'm just gonna. I'm winging it, guys. I'm winging it. 
I think that's her. Oh, no. See how it moves? Okay. Don't move. Don't move. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Then you get this little piece right here. And this is going to be kind of like your frame. All right, so this is going to go over. Yes, that's kind of nice where you can just, when it's all over off to the side, on the it's right, right side aligned, you can just kind of do that kind of business. Look how sweet. Oh, my gosh. I love it. I just kind of love that pretty lady. Uh, I just realized that I didn't go all the way over with the leaf, but, you know, what else? It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to make that straight. Okay, so from here, we're going to get our little cicada. We're going to color them. We're going to cut them out. I'm just going to show you how I colored them. Um, and then I think you can figure it out how to cut them out. And there is a die for him. I don't have the die for him yet, but there is a die for him. Um, this little part right here, I just stamped it on a about two and a half by... Let's be honest here. Did I measure this out originally? No, three fourths. Two and a half by three fourths piece of white paper and created the little banner. This underneath was just a little extra piece of scrap paper that I thought, oh, wouldn't that be cute? And I made the little point in the opposite direction from the banner peaks. Um, I love that because see, you are not old and cicada ears. And on the inside, happy birthday. He's so cute. And we could put little, you know, you could put him around there if you wanted him to. Um, okay, but let's go ahead and show you how I colored Mr. Cicadamon. Do I want to do an orange? No, I don't. Okay, so for him, I... Where is he? Here he is. Here he is. I am going to put him on this little scrap piece of paper that I have, and I am going to use my stamping tool because, you know, I just don't trust myself. Where's my blackie? Okay, so when you watch this, and it, if, if you, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to keep it short, but you know me, I just, it's like short is not in my vocabulary. I'm known for not short videos. I'm sorry. And now I'm like out of touch. It's like even longer. <laughs> don't have my stuff together. Uh, anyway, but if you, if you do, if you're watching this, will you please just send a little note, say, hey, great, we're going to make that work, because um, he's adorable. Look how cute he is, oh my gosh. It's the eyes. I think it's the eyes, right? Um, it's the eyes. All right. Um, first, we're going to go with YG25 at the nose. And I don't hardly ever use that broad tip. I always use the brush tip. So Mr. Nose gets just a little bit of that. And then I'll come in with uh, G24. I think it's G24. Yep. Slightly darker shade and just color right there and right over here just to give it a little bit more depth and a dimension okay okay from there i did y g17 and g85 i believe that's what i did oh no i'm lying to you um g14 and g95 you guys i think i keep lying to you hold on yg 17 and G14? Yes. Okay. That's what happens when you make colors. I'm sorry. Okay. So first I'm going to go with G14 and that is going to be the top, I'll call what I call his little head. And just color right in there. So I'm basically just doing kind of like a light to dark kind of deal. 
and YG17 on this one. And for this, really, I'm just using him as a shading tool, a shading instrument. Now I might take, I might come back with my YG14. Or excuse me, just G14, not YG14. Fill in some of that right there. And then a little bit darker with the G94 and add even that much more depth. It's like my favorite thing about Copic markers is the depth that it allows you to um, do. And it just blends so nicely. All right, pretty, look how pretty. All right, from there, I've got, I believe I'm using this, the G94 as his body color. This is his body. And I like to blend colors together that maybe you wouldn't think go together. You guys, do you see my gray hair? I'm growing it out. I know. I, I'm growing it out. And until then, it's just going to look like this big patch of gray. But such is life. All right. And then this is BG78. And I'm using BG78 as my, my shading for this one. And it is a little darker, quite darker. And maybe you wouldn't think to do BG78 for to, and match it with um, G85, which is what I'm doing for the color. But I like it. I think it works. I think it works just fine. Okay, so went with this first. Then I went with the BG78, which is a blue green. And then I went back over here to kind of mix it up again and blend it. Um, okay, so from there, oh, I forgot his little, I forgot his little eyelids. Okay, where's G14? G14. Little eyelids. And I colored all of his eyelids in G14. The little dot I left, I, I actually did in the uh, G85, no, excuse me, G94, because I wanted those dark gray. Okay. And then YG17, just a little bit down here. Maybe here are on the corners, you know, the edges where there might be just a little bit more need for some depth in dimension. Okay. I love him. He's so cute. All right, guys, is he blurry to you? I'm sorry if he's blurry. Let's see if I can just zoom in. Does that fix things? I think it does not fix things. Sorry. Just, you know, hopefully it's not too bad. Okay, um, then I'm going to go and do the wings because this is taking way too long already. And super, super light BG11 over everything. And I'm going to try not to go over the black too much. Because like I said, it will pull some of that black licorice ink but if you have a mento ink then you should be good to go and I don't know maybe Inky Stamper's ink is good with Copics okay that'll do and then from there I did um basically different uh combinations of BG 15 13 um 32 and 34 um, and I just kind of mixed them and just all over some dark, some light. I tried to kind of create a little bit of a kaleidoscope is the wrong word. I don't know what the word is. You, you, you can tell me where it's just kind of random. It's not kaleidoscope. You guys, what am I thinking? Uh, mosaic, mosaic type. Look, that's the color or that's the one I'm talking about again with the BG 15 along the outside rim. 
I wanted these to pop up a little bit. Although I will say that when you add the journey dust, it kind of takes away a little bit from that. And you can't even really tell that it's dark, but it's dark. Um, BG13. Again, I just kind of pick these at random. Thirty-four. Uh, Thirty-four here. Thirty-four here, and I think I'm going to leave those two that are sticking out a little lighter. BG eleven thirty-two. Let's go with thirty-two. No, I'm not going to go thirty-two. We're going to go with BG eleven, which is what I just did. No, we're going with thirty-two just a little bit, just here. And then we'll come back in with the 11 to kind of uh, blend it out a little bit. Okay. That's it, folks. That is it, okay? They're so cute. Oh my gosh, I forgot his little legs. Little legs are basically the same G85. Little legs. His little, his little bitty little bit right there. Right there. There we go. Okay. And you can come in and you can add a little bit of shading here if you'd like. Just at the body. Okay. And then if you had the dye, you can just bop him out. Um, but really from there, guys, you're going to take your journey glaze. Um, add a little journey glaze. Add a little uh, journey dust. And then... You get this little cutie patootie guy right here. So fun with those kind of fun iridescent, uh, so when the light can catch it. Um, deals on his wings, you'll cut him out, you'll pop him up. You'll put some journey glaze on top of this leaf here because that's the kind of leaf I want. And then um, I added this cloud here from Cloud Dreams. And um, from Cloud Dreams right there, I just dropped stuff there and I inked a little bit of lovely blue around the cloud. A bit of lovely blue around the cloud. And then added some of little cute little sequins to act like a little rain. Just kind of a little nature loving card. I don't know. Do you like it? Is it cute? What do you think? I don't know. Maybe not a touch. I love Mr. Cicada. I think he is adorable and I think that this would be an adorable little card for a little nature lover. Okay, let me switch back over. Maybe I don't want to switch back over because that light is like, woo! <laughs> anyway, um, I hope you liked it. Um, go check out her store. Okay, again, the stamp set is Cicada. And the uh, inkystamper.com. Okay, so inkystamper.com. All right. Um, I believe that they are going live tomorrow, which is Wednesday, which is probably when you might see this video. Um, so yes, go check that out. This and a lot more cute, oh, I promise, some more things, fun things are coming. So anyway, you guys, that's it. I took, I kept you way longer than I wanted to. I'm so sorry, but you didn't have to watch it all anyway, I guess. <laughs> all right. I hope you guys are doing great and we will see you next time. Bye.